Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing quadratic equations. So to check your answers on these, you can graph your equation and see if the answers match. You just need to make sure that your equation is set equal to zero if it is not already. So let's start with our first method, which is solve by factoring. So to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we use the zero product property, which is where we set the equation equal to zero, we factor, and then we set each factor equal to zero. So let's look at this one right here. It is already set equal to zero. I just need to factor it. And the first thing that we always check for when we factor is GCF. And I see a GCF here. It is 3x. And 3x squared divided by 3x is just x, and negative 36x divided by 3x is negative 12. So now I set each factor equal to 0. I'm going to set 3x equal to 0 and divide by 3, and I get x equals 0. And then I'm going to set x minus 12 equal to 0, and we would add 12, and I get that x equals 12. So my two solutions to this quadratic are zero and 12. So remember solutions are the same thing as the x-intercepts. So let's graph this equation three x squared minus 36 x and my x-intercepts should match the solutions. I see my first solution at zero like I got and then the second solution is at 12 like I got. So I did this correctly. Okay, let's look at this next one. It is not set equal to zero. So that's gonna be the first thing that I do. So I'm going to subtract four from both sides. And I get three X squared plus X minus four equals zero. And just double check that it's in standard form. You have descending exponents, which it does. We are good. Okay, now I am going to solve this or factor it. It's three terms, so I'm gonna factor using the x. I'm gonna figure out what multiplies to three times negative four, which is negative 12, and adds to one, since that's the coefficient of x, and that would be four and negative three. So now I'm gonna split the x term up into four x and negative three x. So I'll get three x squared plus four x, minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. And now I have four terms, so I can factor by grouping. The GCF of 3x squared plus 4x is x, and I'm left with 3x plus 4. And I'm going to take a negative 1 GCF of this second group so that my common binomial matches and is also 3x plus 4. And now I can fully factor it into x minus 1 and 3x plus 4 equals 0. And now I just need to set each factor equal to 0. I'm going to start with the x minus 1. So x minus 1 equals 0. We would add 1 and get that x equals 1. So there's the first solution. And then the second solution, I'll set 3x plus 4 equal to 0. So we would subtract four and get three x equals negative four and then divide by three and get x equals negative four thirds. So the two solutions to this equation are negative four thirds and one. Okay, let's look at this on the graph really quick. My um, factors were, I'm gonna type the factored form x minus 1 times 3x plus 4. I'm typing the factored form in because this has to do with what we're doing next. So my factors were x minus 1, but if you notice, my solution was a positive one. And then this other factor was 3x plus 4, but my factor was negative. So my factors in my zeros or solutions have the opposite signs. So on your star test, you might have some questions about the zeros and the factored form. And the main thing you need to know is that they have opposite signs. So let's take a look at this one. It's asking for the zeros and the factored form. So let's go ahead and factor this. X squared minus 25 is a difference of two squares because I see the subtraction sign. 
and the square root of x squared is x and the square root of 25 is five. So it factors in to f of x equals x plus five times x minus five. And then the zeros are the solution, so it'd be what I get when I set each factor equal to zero. For x plus five equals zero, I would subtract five and get x equals negative five. And then for x minus five, when I set that equal to zero, I would add five and get x equals five. So the zeros, negative five and five, can be found when the equation is in the factored form of zero equals x plus five times x minus five. Okay, let's look at another one of those. I have g of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 63. So I have a trinomial, just a basic trinomial, so I just need to find the two numbers that multiply to negative 63 and add to negative 2, which would be negative 9 and 7. And I don't need to go through the grouping like I did with this one because I just have an x squared. It's just a basic trinomial. I can just jump to the factors of x minus 9 times x plus 7. So for the factored form of the equation, I get g of x equals x minus 9 and x plus 7. And now to find the zeros or the solutions, I just set each of those equal to 0. I would add a 9 and get x equals 9 for this first solution. And then on the second one, I would set x plus 7 equal to 0. I would subtract 7 and get x equals negative 7. So the zeros of the function are negative 7 and positive 9 because the factors of g were x minus 9 and x plus 7. Okay, so that is solving by factoring, and we talked about the relationship between the zeros and the factors. Another method that you will see on your star test is solve by square roots. So this method is really easy, but you can't always use it. So look for it, because if you can use it, that's what you want to use. Um, if there is no bx term, then we want to get the squared part isolated. And then we can take the square root of both sides and solve for both cases. So like on this one right here, I only have x squared and constants. So I'm gonna be able to solve by square roots. I just need to get that x squared by itself first. So I'm going to subtract 15 and I get nine x squared equals four. And the x squared part is almost by itself. I just need to divide by nine and I get x squared equals 4 ninths. And then the last step to solve this is to take the square root of both sides. And I get x equals positive or negative 2 thirds, since the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, let's look at this next one. I have this whole squared part that I need to get by itself. And the way I can do that is by subtracting five first, and I get x plus two squared equals 16. And now I'm going to take the square root, and I get x plus two equals positive or negative four. And then the last thing I need to do to get x by itself is subtract 2. So I get x equals negative 2 plus or minus 4. So now I just need to solve for both cases, negative 2 minus 4 and negative 2 plus 4. So negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6 and negative two plus four is two. So negative six and two are the two solutions to this equation. 
All right, so we've talked about factoring and square roots, which are easier than our last method, just a little less complicated, but they don't always work. Our last method works for any quadratic equation in standard form. So the first thing you need to do is just make sure that you have your equation in standard form, move everything to one side if it's not already, and then we can plug into the quadratic formula and get both solutions. So let's look at this first one. It is already in standard form. It looks like a is one, b is negative nine, and c is 22. So now I can plug into quadratic formula. It'll be x equals opposite of b. So that would be a positive nine plus or minus the square root of b squared. So negative nine squared minus four times a is one times c is 22 all over 2 times a is 1. So now let's simplify what we can and I get x is 9 plus or minus the square root of, need to put that into the calculator, negative 9 squared minus 4 times 1 times 22 and we get negative 7 all over 2 and I am done because I see that I have the square root of a negative number so I cannot take the square root of a negative number and that means I have no real solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, let's look at this last one. I'm gonna solve it with quadratic formula. So the first thing I need to do is set it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract nine from both sides and I get two X squared plus seven X minus nine equals zero. So now I know that A is two, B is seven and C is negative nine. So I'm ready to plug into the quadratic formula. It'll be x equals opposite of b, so negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 7 squared, minus 4 times a is 2 times c is negative 9, all over 2a, so 2 times 2. So now I'm going to simplify the number under the radical and the denominator. So it'll be negative seven plus or minus the square root of parenthesis seven squared minus four times two times negative nine. And I get 121 all over two times two, which is four. And I know the square root of 121 is 11, so I get negative seven plus or minus 11 all over four. So now I just need to solve for both cases. I would do negative seven minus 11 all over four and negative seven plus 11 all over four. So negative seven minus 11 all over four would be negative 18 divided by four, which simplifies to negative nine halves. And then negative seven plus 11 would be four over four, which is one. So the two solutions to this quadratic equation are negative nine halves and one.